I've never been on a podcast. Sorry, ADHD, what was the question? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, what were those like collabs actually like? And I was just like, um, uh, Alicia crying and me standing up for her to everybody. <laughs> like, I feel like even you guys do it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I usually sit on she that side. not confused. <laughs> no. Oh. Ramble. Pretty basic. Thank you to Grammarly and Stamps.com for sponsoring this episode of Pretty Basic. When was the last time you were on a podcast? I've never been on a podcast. <gasps> <gasps> ah! Oh my God, we're Title. taking her V card. I was yeah. popping Nikki Demar's cherry. Yeah, now I'll be just like attached because that's what happens when you lose your V card. Yeah. So I'll be like attached <laughs> to this Then she'll, she'll be like uh, the fifth reoccurring guest. <laughs> she'll just keep coming back We on. go to the unofficial like guest. She, she's on the street just in her car, just like shades on. She's like, watching. oh, I'm free to record if you guys want. <laughs> Honestly, guys, like this set is insane. Oh my God, thank, thank you. Thank you. It's serious business. We're so lucky to have you in the studio. I know. Thanks for so having excited. me. Of course. No, I've wanted this to happen for so long and it finally worked out. Dude, like I've been watching your podcast, so it's like, I'm excited. Is it weird <laughs> being on set versus like seeing it? Oh, always. That's always how it is. Because when you see like someone's YouTube channel and you see like their bedroom and them sitting in their bedroom, like you just see like a flat version of it. And when it's like 3D and you're in it, you're like, oh, so like this is the vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever people come into my house, they're like, oh, like. On, online this I thought this room was this way and I thought this was this way and I, this looks bigger this looks smaller it's like weird what you imagine versus actually physically being yeah in that's yeah. my favorite part about going to youtubers houses literally I'm like same. wow that's really big literally same well if you guys are you know new here watching on well first of all I really suggest you watch the YouTube video of this because we have a very 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 exciting guest we have miss Nikki Dimar Woo! here in the studio hello <sighs> the crowd goes wild <laughs> <laughs> okay I feel like some of you know Nikki from Nikki and Gabby, obviously. Like, they grew up with you. Yeah. Does that trigger you when people say that? Actually, not anymore. It used to. Same. Really? Yeah. And, like, what way? Just because, like, I was like, well, I'm still making YouTube videos. Yeah. Like, why aren't you, like, still with yeah. me? You're like, I used to love you when I was 12. And you're like, yeah. okay. Thanks, so you're yeah, still around. It's yeah. like, great. You look like you're, like, 21. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I feel still, actually. Yeah. Uh, same. It used to bother me. And now I see it as a, a huge compliment. Where I'm like, oh, my God. Holy, like, holy shit. We were actually a huge part of people's. The formative years. Chat, the formative years. <laughs> well, like, to this day, we still talk about, like, Disney stars and Hillary Duff and yeah. stuff. And, like, we still keep up with their lives. So it's. Like those people you watch at those impressionable years, I feel like we're blessed to have been a part of those people's, like that time of their lives, yeah. you know? Oh, that's so true. We that's got a hook true. in them a little bit. I, the nostalgia <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> of the oversaturation, yeah. all the collabs. Yeah. We've talked about some collab drama on here before. I was recently just like sharing that with somebody. I don't, I forget who, but they were asking me like, yeah, what were those like collabs actually like? And I was just like, um, <laughs> uh, Alicia crying and me, <laughs> me standing up for her to everybody. Like, <laughs> Like a fucking torch. <laughs> My favorite story is the Halloween in Bethlehem one. Oh, <laughs> that was that was the bad. I want to hear that from your point yeah. of view because she talks about it all the time. I've never talked about it publicly, Please. but like we're like through enough shit like where I feel okay talking about it. Okay, but they, I, I went to BeautyCon New York City with Alicia and Mia and Gabby, and uh, Gabby always did like her own thing. <laughs> and it was just like me, Alicia, and Mia. And um, I get broken up with over a text <gasps> in, at BeautyCon, that BeautyCon. And I wait, I didn't know that part. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah. And they were supposed to come home with me. Of like a four year, rela like long yeah, term four -year relationship. Four year relationship. You know, just, I, I had to interview. a text message? Yeah. And I had to interview Drew Barrymore that day. Oh. <gasps> yeah. After that, while that was all going on. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah. So I was like, oh my God. How'd the interview go? It actually went okay. Okay, good. But I did tell her what was going on backstage, and she's a sweetheart. So she's like helping me out. She seems so <laughs> yeah. nice. Okay, yeah. good to know. Good to know. And um, then I remember not thinking it was real because he always pulled stuff like that because we were just young. Yeah. We were just like, bless him to this day. I, I, I don't know how he's doing. I think he's happy with someone else. But like, I'm, I'm not trying to shit on him. Like, I do have respect for him now that I'm older and I, I see a situation differently. Yeah. But um, I went through that breakup at BeautyCon and then okay. I didn't know I was obviously going to go through a breakup that day. Like you never know when you are going to. And um, I had plans for Alicia and Mia to come home with me in like this car service. And then like, oh. and then like from New York to Pennsylvania. Wait, so cute. And like, we were going to they like sleep in my childhood bedroom at my parents' house. I still live there. Oh. 
And what we were, year was this? Like 2016, like fall. Oh yeah, because wow. it was after we went on tour. Yeah. So, oh, this is yeah. after the tour. Yeah. <gasps> and okay. we were like, well, let's do a Halloween collab because that's my favorite time of the year. <laughs> and Alicia was always like, I've never been a fall or Halloween girl, but let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. That's so me. And we, I felt so stupid because they like literally uh, like, that was the plan for like a week they were going to be staying with me and meanwhile i'm going through a breakup and they didn't know what to do no, and then we had to film the collab my favorite part was oh <laughs> they picture mia and i in like hollow like slutty halloween costumes right and then we're sitting <laughs> waiting for nikki at her house the next thing we know she just doesn't really come home and she <laughs> went to her ex's house no oh. <laughs> <laughs> in my firefighter costume <laughs> but that's hot at least no. you like weren't wearing like a hot dog costume like on the side of the road just like waiting no, mia was in this lion costume and i was in this dorothy <laughs> costume we're like, like, just like sitting we're like wonder when nikki's coming home <laughs> and then i came home and i was like it looked like i was crying and i was like <laughs> we're like, it's okay. We all, it was just so funny it's okay. yeah. it had to happen yeah and that oh, yeah, that collab like now when i watch it I, it's crazy because we pre-filmed it. When yeah. We, and it was supposed to come out like around Halloween. And like we were doing this back and forth, like break up together, break up together. And I was like going through it. But by the time I had to edit it and actually put it out, we were like donezo. He had a new girlfriend. And I was like <gasps> editing the video crying because I remember we like had sex that night. Oh, I was like, oh, we're like, like yeah. 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 I'm honestly like, dramatic. I'm imagining like you as a ketchup and then like me, <laughs> me as, as a mustard. mustard. <laughs> we're just like, damn, like, she's been gone a long time. <laughs> Wonder when she's coming uh, home. <laughs> what videos? Like, what were the titles of the videos? I remember the lion costume very vividly. Um, yes, in the hallway. You did like a college. Remember we filmed it at a college. Yes, oh, the hallway, yeah. the dorms. Yes, I remember. It was like Gabby's college. Yes, yeah. that was the start of you guys aging up, branching off. I remember being like, "Oh my god, like can we do?" It was lion. like, yeah. yeah I think you guys lion. were shocked that mm -hmm. I chose that title. It was like. Girl, college girls on Halloween. Yes, it was something like that. <laughs> crazy title. I forget what. <laughs> I know, crazy title. <laughs> Woo, rated X over there. <laughs> Why is yours like? I think mine was like girl struggle. Halloween. Or Literally, girl struggle. struggle. I think it was like girl that was something. Your thing. Yeah, I milked that. Poor Alicia. Mia definitely probably did expectations versus reality because yes. she did that every collab too. I was well, taking a walk in my neighborhood yesterday, and I walked by the local high school, which I went like a different route than I have. And there is like a beautiful football field that I've never noticed before. And I hate that my first reaction was like, that would have been great for back to school videos. <laughs> and then I thought, should we do a parody? <gasps> like that could be really funny. Wait, if we, we do, do like a, a big collab, we should do a fucking collab. Wouldn't that be funny? Would, yeah. Yes. I'm down. Okay. Wait, and we should do something about like, if we were being honest back then, <gasps> like it should be like a play off of. A hundred percent. You know what I mean? No, but, but wait, we have to bump the saturation. Obviously, wait, that's you know a given. <laughs> that's super, I don't even think we should, like, I think we should do it like how we would have done it before. Like, oh I think God. that's old. Playing my old self. Yes. But is that, yes. is that the collab? Like, like that's your video and then my video is different? And yes, then. no, exactly. Like, I think it'd be really funny. Like oh a, my god! I think it'd be so good. Like locker decor, we could do. No, literally yeah. yesterday I was in Staples with TK because she had to get something laminated, and I literally see the back to school session a section. I literally was just like, "This is a weird fever dream." I'm just trying to figure out how we like now. YouTube's very vlog centered, and people that are like going back to school are very realistic and like seem older than how we were. And yeah, yeah it, I'm just wondering how we somehow like no one held something to our head and was like you can't curse you have to like make a set like why did we feel the need to filter so hard and make our lives look like that it was I think a lot of people don't understand how that was expected of us that was a really good question yeah that was a I, good question. I feel like then what like Disney Channel like we were the bridge between what Disney Channel was like the year that we were really popping off I feel like that was the decline of Disney and their normal demo wasn't really watching. So yeah. then they started watching us. So they were like, oh, well, we still expect you to be like, oh, I don't drink, I don't curse, whatever. Whoa. And now I feel like the demo that w would would have watched Disney, they're on TikTok, so it's all real. I also so think I feel the like kids they just wouldn't... grew up faster too. Like kids yeah. nowadays are like partying and doing more than I think the same age was doing back then. That's what I personally Yeah, I even yeah. saw a Dixie D'Amelio tweet. She was like, I've never wanted people to think that I don't curse or I don't like part like I from the very beginning I made it obvious that like I'm not like that so I thought it's super interesting because we did feel that pressure like oh yeah. we have to be an, a good role model xyz whatever yeah that's, that's why I always true. used to get mad at Gabby because like I saw the pressure 
like I, I saw the blueprint we had to fit and like she just kind of was like doing crazy shit and like photos would get leaked of her at the bar and stuff and like smoking and like in a thong like shit she like was that. in her miley era yeah, she, she was. was i love that how though. i know you've talked about this like in your videos and stuff but what was it like then versus now like working with fam everyone says don't work with family mm-hmm. like being a twin like being compared to that like do you regret branding your guys's selves as a tw- as t- opposite twins like do you feel stuck in that are you grateful for that i don't feel stuck anymore but i definitely did feel stuck before the pandemic, it wasn't until like I found passion in my own channel and actually found a really great producer and started actually making the music I want. I didn't I know how to identify myself outside of Nikki and Gabby because for the longest time, that channel was my identity because I like I was the editor of the channel. I came up with a lot of the strategies and yeah, me and Gabby came up with ideas together, but ultimately I was the one that did like the research and the titles and the the computer keywording. Like mm-hmm. I, I don't want to take credit at all for growing the channel, but I think I'm so grateful for being a twin because I wouldn't have this life. Like we are, we balance each other out really well. And I was the, like the brains and she was the humor and the like, fuck it one. You, I feel like you kind of need a fuck it partner vibe. Mm-hmm. If you're not, if you're a little more serious. Yeah. We clash over that a lot right, it's so funny because i think a lot of people would assume you're the fuck it one where well, you are now right yeah that's actually a really like, good point yeah. yeah at least like yeah looking like, yeah aesthetics like really don't mean shit yeah <laughs> like, it's so true i'm very i mean i'm definitely in a fuck it era right now but mm-hmm. i'm very aware that it's an era because i'm going through things and you're older i mean this was like what seven years ago yeah but i think my nature is to think things through and try to do everything right that's always been me mm-hmm. and gabby's always been like I'm going to have fun yeah. and I'm going to make everyone else have fun. And we'll worry about that later. Yes. If anything. Oh, yeah, I'm so for jealous. Sure. Yeah. I see that. Yeah. So I feel like when I felt stuck, um, I think at first I loved it. Like when 18, 19, 20, 21, like I was like, wow, this is how we can differentiate ourselves. Like from a business yeah. perspective, I was like, no one, like there's no twin Bethany Modas. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I was like, let's go for it. Let's just try it. Isn't yeah. that crazy? Like, yeah. I don't think people realize how thought out, a lot of and strategic a lot of the things that we did back then like some people like oh my god you're not in school why are you doing back to school i'm like bitch i know what i'm doing you know what i mean but i feel like (laughs) you guys were the blueprint blueprint for strategy and then like i and everybody else followed suit watching you guys do your big full thought out collabs like i never thought to do a collab like that until i watched you guys do it oh my god and like uploading at the same time like i was always just so inspired by everything you guys did oh my god usually what would happen at those times is someone in the group would be like my video's not done and we're like fuck we planned on going live at 3 p.m who was always the one we all know who was mia Mia. Mia. (laughs) (laughs) she would post hers like a day or two later and she'd be like don't worry just like link my channel and i was like what like you don't i don't (laughs) she's so chill Oh, she's listening to this right now laughing so hard. The other <laughs> iconic one was the one at her apartment complex in the pool. Girls in the summer. No, do you remember me walking off camera? Because I was like, I do, like, I feel so uncomfortable right now. That was like drama. I remember as a viewer, that was drama. Oh, yeah, because they're like, you cut out Alicia. No, there was literally drama channels reporting on like that intro we had where we were all like lined up heads. There was like six of us. And they're like, yeah, look at, she's side eyeing this one and this one. Oh, my God. I remember there was like a clip of Marin, like she like just like looked and people people still understand. Like we should upload raw footage of those collabs. That (laughs) is my next series. Like that would literally do so well. Like the raw footage of an intro being like <laughs> okay go <laughs> hi guys hi guys hi me hi guys <laughs> the spring break collab stands out in my yes, head that's yes spring break yes that's right. it's like cra- so funny you would theme them like oh we killed it are you kidding we were, we were like crazy like we were and i get why i always clicked with you more than gabby because you and i were the ones who were like oh my god we need to be like editing or like let's come up with video ideas or like whatever like we like loved that shit while she was like out partying I having a like good time we had like <laughs> like excited little boy energy about youtube yeah we were just like, like obsessed with it yeah you're like, but yeah. now now it makes sense because we do have obsessive personalities we both were extreme personalities like it's like perfectionist hard worker all or nothing it could be like my mild OCD. Uh, yeah. Yeah. OCD, ADHD, <laughs> yeah. like it all same. just, it all makes sense. It all makes sense. Yeah. Um, I remember it when it was a big deal for you to voice that you wanted to be paid for editing. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I remember like then being like, oh my God, cause she would edit everything. But Amongst like they you just, and Gabby, yeah, but they would split be, everything. Yeah. There would be like, more. yeah, I know sense. Gabby feels bad now, but like, I don't think she realized. But also um, at the time I feel like yeah. most people would be like, oh no, you just split it all. 
But now I think everyone sees how much work goes into editing. Yeah. Where it's like, that's a full-time job. Yeah, like I would be on family vacations um, while like she would be like off with her boyfriend, not realizing like I could like, you know, I brought it upon myself, but now looking back, I, it was just a weird situation. We yeah. didn't know how to handle success. And like, I took it on myself. I was like, I can edit, let me do it. And I would stay inside and not even like go to go onto the beach and just be editing. I remember you guys filmed a video on the beach on your vacation. Oh yeah, the <laughs> lookbook. The lookbook. Yeah, yeah. The lookbook. I love the lookbook. <laughs> the lookbook. It was just so I different then. <laughs> yeah. I loved that like YouTube era because I just think it like me and Alicia are like tech nerds and we love editing and we like the craft of YouTube as well as being on camera. And I think like TikTok, it doesn't have the craft that we like. And I really liked when a platform that was like rewarding good editing was really popular. Like I, I really mm. miss it because my editing now doesn't mean as much and mm -hmm. I like makes Not me sad. It's fulfilling, I'm sure. Let's, I want to talk about TikTok though. Yeah. Cause I feel like you kill it on TikTok. Oh. Like yeah. actually. I agree completely. I liked your TikTok where you're like, I used to try and be so different and not like most girls. And now yes. I am like most girls. I love that though. That's such a crazy like thing to finally be able to understand and like also embrace. Yeah. I thought that was so special because like we all are trying to stand out so much, but then it's eventually get to a point where you're like, wait, I want to be like everybody else. Like there's, there's beauty in that. Yeah. Still. Everyone's like, am I being a pick me girl? Like who cares? Oh, I am I'm a pick me girl. Such a pick me. <laughs> I'm such a pick me all the time. I hate it. Um, music, TikTok, has that helped? Has it hurt? Thoughts on artists on TikTok being like, my label's forcing me to do this. Like what I want to know. Cause I, yeah. the music industry is very hard. And I feel like I've come across a lot of TikTokers lately who are like, no, my main passion is music. I don't know how much I should be giving into these viral trends, but I also know like that's gonna grow me and that stresses me out, so I can't imagine. Yeah, so the way that we can just do YouTube ourselves and we know it like out of the back of our hand, like inside and out, and it's a no brainer, like we have answers for everything. I, I realize like we naturally self-taught ourselves things, but I'm not a producer. I haven't been in this industry long, so I'm very, very naive. It's a lot more fulfilling. I feel like I have purpose in music, but it's terrifying. And you're basically gambling as an independent artist or a smaller artist in a label. You're gambling your time that you can't get back, your energy, which you could burn out. You're gambling all this for that one chance. And it's like, what I wanna really know, like, hard. what is it about music versus any other industry? Cause I, I know everyone says like, the music industry is like brutal. Like what specifically from your end do you feel like you understand more now? As an independent artist, it's um, just messy, mm -hmm. especially when like you're the label yourself mm. and you're your own A&R and you're your own digital marketing. And like, it's the most humbling thing. I think I'm actually like a good person now. Not that I ever wasn't, but I know what it's like to actually kind of struggle. I had never struggled until like going for music, I'm like, woo. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's how much I love it. Yeah. When you went into music, did you, was it a tough pill to swallow going from YouTube where you know everything going into music? Think, did you think you're like, oh, I got this. Like I already have YouTube down lock. Like I can do this. And did you have to like, also, did I'm you so have a sorry. humbling moment? I hope you know your biggest hair tie fan is sitting right here. No, literally, I wanted to bring it up. I wanted to bring it up. I also are you obviously, but like, like. So good. I watch it once a week. Really? Absolutely. No, we've watched it so many times. Like every time. Like all your adsense from that. <laughs> just kidding. I love that you love hair tie. We just did that for fun, literally. It was again. a work of art. <laughs> Truly so good. But that's besides the point. So was it a humbling experience for you? Like, did you go in? Because I you feel like when views. we started the podcast, we were like, oh, we got this because we do YouTube. And then it was a whole other ball game. And oh I'm God. sure music is just that times 50. Yeah. Yeah. So when I started music, the reason I didn't full force start music like before the quarantine was because I had I had it like that early 20s ego where I'm like, I don't want to look like I'm failing. I, so I didn't go for what I really wanted, which is so stupid. OK, here at Pretty Basic, you guys know we've already talked to you about how incredible Grammarly is. If you guys are just like us, maybe you're sending an email, a text, a DM, and you're overthinking your grammar and you are too scared to send it and you're agonizing over every word until it's perfect. Grammarly has got you covered. From emailing professors to announcing club activities, everything that you write matters. There are a thousand ways to say what you need to say. Grammarly helps you 
get it right without the stress. Seriously, you guys, Grammarly is absolutely incredible. If you're running a blog or a cooking website like me, if you are writing emails or papers for college, whatever it may be, they have got you covered so that you can feel confident in whatever it is you're submitting, posting, everything under the sun. Personally, nothing makes me feel more confident than when I am sending whatever it is or writing whatever it is. And I know that I've got my grammar down pat on lock and I do not have to overthink it. It makes me feel so smart and I love it so much and Grammarly has got my back. Also, they have the perfect turn of phrase with a double click synonym feature. So you can quickly search for replacements for words that are causing you problems, or maybe you have like a basic word and you want to elevate it a bit, you know, maybe you're saying uh, run, but you can actually say sprint, something like that to just make it a little bit more interesting. They've got you covered. There's also potential ad libs. So maybe like there's a word that you overuse. Grammarly can help prevent that. You can also say your audience and tone before you start with Grammarly's goal feature. And there's also a built-in tone detector. So it can tell you how your message comes across. So maybe you're sending a text and you're not quite sure, is this a little too aggressive? Is it like passive aggressive? They can help you with that. Let Grammarly help you put yourself out there with style. Our listeners can get 20% off Grammarly premium at grammarly.com slash basic. That's 20% off at G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y.com slash basic. You and Gabby did music together and now you're doing it separate. Mm -hmm. So was that hard? Like, tell us behind the scenes what that was like. Yeah, like I knew branching off from doing music with Gabby was gonna upset my parents and upset Gabby because obviously my parents loved seeing us do that stuff together. They've seen it our whole lives. We always did music together. But I started diving into Spotify and like really getting into like, like independent artists that I didn't even know who they were and just discovering new artists and listening to like Fresh Finds, New Music Friday, and realizing all these independent artists have amazing lyrics and amazing songs, and I relate to them. And it inspired me to take my writing to the next level because mm. I was putting out stuff before I went solo while with doing music with Gabby. Yeah. But then I realized I just, I have so much I want to say, and I can't say it. Like, whenever we do, like, a song with Nikki and Gabby, my business mind was like, this is a viral moment. Yeah. Mm. But that's all it was, was a viral moment. I wasn't connected to the lyrics of Hair Tie. I wasn't connected to the lyrics of Are You. Yeah. Um, we didn't even write those songs. I was going to say, yeah. talk about that EP, because I feel like that was a good-ass EP. Yeah. But the process of, like, we buying didn't rights write, and... We didn't write the songs. So it's hard to feel connected to it when no, it's No, yeah, we just, like, went to, like, music publishers and, like... And that was expensive. Yeah. Do they just give you, like stacks and like which one do you like essentially yeah like what's the process pretty much like send like a folder of songs but like I hated that I I hated that because I just didn't feel connected yeah but I knew like I was still in Nikki and Gabby CEO mindset so I was like this is a viral moment also you can have opposite branding for like a YouTube channel or even a clothing brand but for it two artists like that's kind of hard to do like you guys have very different music styles we always so so one of the really like big moments that made me realize i okay i'm gonna go solo this year was when we were doing hair tie it's such like a good funny song and we were doing this for fun and we were on the phone with the director coming up with like the concept and the color scheme and stuff and we were arguing so bad and i was like i thought to myself it shouldn't feel like this. Like Mm. if you're about to like do something for fun because you love it and like, it shouldn't feel like this. Like this should be the most exciting call. It shouldn't be an argument, you know? Yeah. And I realize I just need to just do my own thing. And I realize we have different, like she she doesn't even listen to what I listen to. Like how could we put out music together? Yeah. 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 What? Like I think a lot of creators are feeling this right now where they're like, oh, well, that will go viral, so I should do that. Like, a lot of TikTokers, I feel like, are starting to come into that wave of, like, oh, shit, this will do well, but, like, what's my passion? Like, what advice do you have for them? So the whole TikTok thing in the music industry, like, it definitely has changed the music industry. If your song blows up on TikTok, like, you're going to have a hit. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just how it is. There's ways to go about it. So, like, I went through eras where where my team was, like, you need to just give it all to TikTok. And when you try for that moment, it doesn't happen. It's not natural. Yeah. And like then the times where I don't try and I just, I just (laughs) really, it just, that's when it happens. Mm -hmm. So I have peace of mind knowing that like I I can't try and it just has to be authentic because no one wants, you know how TikTok is. If if it's forced, it's not going to perform. So that took that weight off of my chest. But yeah, I definitely feel like knowing like your niche Mm. is key and like really connecting with your audience for music because they're the ones that are going to go to your shows yeah. and your meet and greets and <sighs> tell other yes. people about your music. Yeah. And um, they're the reason 
like I'm even like getting playlisted because they'll stream the shit out yeah, of it. Yeah, that was, I always yeah. get so excited when I'm on like New Music Friday or some playlist and like one of your songs are there. I'm like, holy fuck, like that's, that's is that huge. is that just random? Is that your team pushing it? Like having a Man, publicist? Like I don't have a publicist actually. You don't? Oh my God, mm-hmm. us either right now. Yeah. <laughs> We're in the market. <laughs> when you're like really promoting something, I get it. But yeah. in the downtime, it's like save your coin. Yeah, yeah literally sure. it's so fucking expensive. Sure. Yeah. Sorry, ADHD, what was the question? No, 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 no. I would like, so it's not having a public, like how do you get on those Oh, it's like, streams? it's definitely like, I've had a song go on a playlist before. Um, they select it. Like there's like- so it's them picking it. It's like yeah. an explore page or like mm-hmm. a, that's so well, dope. Spotify like has a whole team of employees just to be listening all day long in and out. New music, new mm-hmm. music, finding people to yeah. m- cur- curate those playlists. It feels like the old um, trending tab on YouTube where it was like, it meant something. You're yeah. like, oh my God, like I got picked. That's really cool. But the crazy thing is like the, if your song doesn't perform well on the playlist, like if like people are skipping over it, it'll get removed. So <gasps> like that hurt the, your account overall? Do you Sometimes feel Sometimes like? it does. Cause like the people over at Spotify are probably like, well, we put their song on a and playlist it and work. it didn't work. So why would we put their next one? So mm. it's like, you have to keep putting out stuff at the same level, if not better. It's the same kind of YouTube pressure, to be honest. Yeah. But it's like in a different way. Like the way that we used to be like, this collab has to be better than this one. And yeah. it's like, you don't want to. like you just have more on the line though. Yeah. Because with music, it is that like one chance. I feel uh, like with YouTube, you can redeem yourself with a YouTube, like a video. You yeah. Know? It's wild seeing TikTok musicians and things, but then seeing how they use TikTok. Like someone I think of a lot is Tate McRae, mm-hmm. who just like absolutely blew up. And then now anytime she posts like a snippet on TikTok, it's guaranteed to just hit the charts and yeah. like do so well because of TikTok. It's really wild to see. And I'm curious, like, what is the turnout for? I know she's touring. Like, what is the turnout for her shows from that? Is it like a TikTok thing? Like, I like her music, but I haven't been to a show. So I'm curious to know what the turnout is from yeah. there. Yeah. I mean, I went to your recent show here in LA. And it was like packed with such diehards. And I like, I had a proud moment. I was like, damn. And they were older. And I remember we always talked about just wanting an older audience. And I was like, holy shit, this is a moment. Also, I want to talk about tour. How was that? Time of my life. Oh my God. You're such a tour bitch. I am. (laughs) Such a tour bitch. Yeah. Were you on the bus? We took a Sprinter van and we <gasps> literally stayed at like motels and drove down it's the East so Coast. Fun. How fun. She's always talking about Girls Night In and how she wants to be on a bus again. Yeah, I'm like, we time. need to go. I'm just like, I just want to go on a bus. I don't even want to tour. I just want to go on a bus. <laughs> we <laughs> thrived Should on tour. Should we just rent a van and do a video? Or Let's we do <laughs> that. Because I don't want to be gone from my dogs. That's my you only thing. Them. They won't want to be in a bus. The love is so much. <laughs> There's just something about like... I've always been like a car girl. Like I love car rides. Like say a place is like three hours away. I won't give a fuck. Like I want to sit in a car. That means time to listen to music and veg out. Yeah. So it's like, imagine that while doing what you love. It's it also like, feels like time stopped on your real life, which is like. That's how I, I feel. Yeah. I probably you can probably run away my therapist. therapist. You can run. Cause, and then you come back and you're like, whoa, like this is a different world. That I got so weird. depressed after my tour though. Oh, I bet. Like nobody, remember that come down? Yeah. Yeah, I, I forgot the come down. Like it's because- Well, I'm sure this one was even more because it was what you loved doing more than like a variety yeah. show, which like- Yeah. <laughs> and like, I, I'm i an independent artist. So it's like, I have to uh, make sure I'm being smart with my money. So as much as I'd want to keep doing tours, I knew that when I got home from tour, I wouldn't be able to do one for a little bit. Yeah. So it, I couldn't even have the comfort of like, well, you're, you're going to go on tour again. Like I, I didn't even have that comfort. Yeah. So I just had to like- swallow a pill like literally like in my throat not like a real pill yeah yeah (laughs) swallow that pill yeah and like um just realize I just got to be okay with this like I was just in a van with a bunch of people that I became so close to and having the time of my life and connecting with fans and and doing what I love but now I have to go back to grocery shopping having no plans uh being bored and sad it's like such a high high yeah yeah and coming back yeah. So when you say independent artist, you're fully self-funded as well. Yes. Holy right now. Shit. So yeah. is that wow. some? What is worth spending the money on for you, and what's not worth spending the money on for you? I've started to realize, which is crazy, because you know I love music videos, but they're not essential. Mm. They're not essential. I think it's like more music, more chance of growing, more also, chance of. Yeah. How much was the hair tie music video? We can. You don't um, have to tell me if you don't want to. But it looked it. like it was millions disgustingly of dollars. expensive. Like I. It looked I've, expensive. I've never made a video like like that expensive for for myself. It so. was. It looked exp- Like quality wise, amazing. But I can't imagine the return. Well, even would remember be as much. when you were 
scouting different production companies to do a cooking <gasps> show for you. Yes. Someone quoted her like 40K and I was like, for it's six, a cooking for show. For six videos. For six in, videos. In a two day shoot. And I was like. And I'm all for paying people what they're sense. worth, but it's hard when you're like, okay, but we could just do it ourselves and save $40,000. Like, like, yeah. As long as it's worth it. But for six videos, I knew the payout wouldn't be even nearly equivalent to that yeah. so it's not worth it to me yeah but yeah that's crazy what's your dream then for your music career are you looking do you want to sign to a label is that the ultimate dream I actually was just having this conversation like this trip I really would love to sign to a label because I feel like you know we did the beginning part I feel like we established like who I am as an artist I think I really know who I am right now and I know like what I want to say I know the sounds I want I literally now sit with my producer and I tell him do this do this do this do this <gasps> I didn't know how to do that before wow, I love that yeah. amazing and now I feel like I, I wasn't ready to get signed until I knew who I was as an artist which is why I'm really excited about the next project I've been working on because this is the most me the most honest the, I have like almost I feel like I do have full control over it I think that is the biggest gem for the music industry and I, this is coming just from someone who grew up with music I'm not even in the music world but talent in general like whether it's a label or manager like there's talented singers out there they're like okay cool you can sing but like why are you different how are you different and I feel like those little things yeah. is what makes a label or an agency be like, oh, we want to work with you, we want to sign you because you get the overall idea. And I think a lot of people are so fucking talented and they're on TikTok and they're getting millions of views because they can sing so well, mm -hmm. but they're like, why am I not getting signed? Why does no one want to work with me? And I feel like it's that, that other part of the industry where it's like, okay, but this is how it is. They're like, okay, but how much money are you going to make us? Like how much money can you like, how, how, who are you as a brand? Like, what can we do? Like there's millions of talented singers out there. How are you different? And I think that's where it is fucked in so many ways because you're like damn it's not about the music but also in like you know how do you sell out shows how do you I don't know I'm rambling right now but I think that's I think a that's whole good though because there are so many talented singers but it's like what do you have to say yeah and I think you finding your voice through like writing iconic that's yeah so like cool I've recently gotten like um like as you guys know I'm like going through like life changes and um I actually didn't ever even bring it to my channel. Like I just continued making content, continued going to LA until I noticed the comments started getting sus. Mm. And then it became they a always lot. Know, they know. Yeah. <laughs> and then I obviously had to like address some things without giving everything because I, I realized I am not comfortable. Like I am just not comfortable with giving that out there, like sitting down and saying my life. Yeah. But I what I am comfortable with is writing lyrics about it where People, when they hear it, they will understand everything. Mm -hmm. But when you just sit and you say things, people don't know how you really felt or how you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, completely. Yeah. I don't want to be misunderstood. And I'm, I'm going through, like, I'm actually cr surprised I've been sane, to be honest. Yeah. Like, my old self would have, like, derailed. But the songs are not actually sad which is the crazy part really there's but, one or two sad songs but like the uh, they're pretty like my personality like blunt sassy sarcastic um and angry mm. yeah I can't imagine what it feels like for someone to be singing lyrics yes to back to and you. to resonate like, with what that. is that like that's so cool like I being on know. stage no no like being on stage like yeah. you're singing your music and then oh. having an audience sing it back to you oh that yeah um yeah I thought you were talking about like someone writing a song about you no 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 no, no, no. you're like yeah I don't know <laughs> um, yeah no I especially like when we were on tour I feel like you saw me and Gabby on stage and people would just scream for Gabby yeah yeah so when I, it hits different. It's a mental fuck. It hits different when I go on stage and everyone's screaming for me. Aww. And you never thought that would happen. Like, that's something I think a lot of people don't know about no. you. Like, your confidence has grown so much. And I think it's because you look like you're very confident. You know, like, you wear what you want, purple in your hair, or whatever. You're like, yeah, I'll do it. Who cares? But, like, especially a few years ago, like, y your confidence was so low. Oh. And I was like, Nikki, like, people are here for you, too. Like, I promise you. And going on tour, and then, of course, it doesn't help when you're at a meet and greet and everyone goes to your twin sister first or, like, the person next to you, and you're just like, I'm just standing here. This is awkward. But I think that's – I've been most excited to see your confidence grow because you were like, oh, I could never do that. I could never live in L.A. I could never go through this breakup with, you know, the Halloween whatever. I could – I just, like, I don't know. That's been very inspiring to watch. Yeah. Well, thank you. But my – the only – 
way I even got here was going through it. Like, I think everybody has that year or two years or three years where it's like, who the fuck was I? That was brutal. Because that is what gets you to like the unfuckable energy. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm going through it, I feel like it takes me a little bit. And then later I'm like, oh, I was going through it. Like, how do you, how do you just like let yourself go through it? Like now versus then? Like, like if you were, I don't know. I feel like you're very self-aware. Like I think a lot of times about the big bear trip where (laughs) we all were like huddled and like sobbing in a circle. (laughs) And that was the thing that you were bringing up that was bothering you at the time. I was like heartbroken, all those things. And we all just like had a nice cathartic experience and and shared what we were going through. But you were very self-aware in the moment of like knowing like, okay, this is how I feel. I'm feeling it currently. Whereas I feel like for us, we like, we... It, we're going through it, but we don't let ourselves realize what it is. And you're just like, oh, I'm like miserable, but I can't tell why until you, you get through it. And you're like, oh, that's why I was going through it. Yeah. But you're very like in tune with yourself. I feel like you ask yourself a lot of questions. Like you're always very like in the know, which is yeah. a really hard thing to do. I think that's like what drove me crazy like a few years ago. I think it's now I realize it's like a gift because I can channel it in like my writing because I feel everything in the present when I'm going through it. And, but I also think that's what kept me in like manipulation and toxic situations because when I would be fighting with someone, I would feel how it would feel if we broke up. Like I have the ability to Mm. like feel all that. So I would just stay and stay hooked. And like, I just, I hate that about me, but I also like that I keep my, I give, I keep myself in check. Um, I think because I did have it so like my mental health was so bad from like 22 to 25. That was like like three straight years of like on and off, like major depression. Um, I think now I have this fear of going backwards Yeah. because I do see how far I've come and I do see how much I've grown and I do see how fearless I've been lately. Mm-hmm. And I'm so proud of myself. Yeah. But when I do go back home to Pennsylvania, I look at my photos of when I'm in LA and I miss her. That's probably that present thing though. Cause you're, yeah. you're like, I remember how I felt then and I was so happy. Yeah. So I don't know what that is, but cause I'm, I'm I love that. That's been I, a constant struggle forever. It has, but I also, last time I lived out here, I didn't like the me that lived out here, but now me out here, I do like who she is. Wow. Yeah. Do you think you'd ever come back here full time? I do. <gasps> That's amazing. So I'm curious now what your thoughts on because we always hear people be like, oh, Ellie's toxic, Ellie's this. From someone who has like loved and hated LA, what are your thoughts on it? I think it's about your circle. Yeah. I didn't I didn't have my circle. And um, back in Pennsylvania, I did have a circle at the time. I was fresh out of college and had my college friends who were constantly posting online, going out, and I felt like I had FOMO. And I didn't have the type of fun out here that, they, that I would have with them at home. So that definitely tainted the experience. I was so young, like literally 22, 23. Yeah. So I moved back home when I was 23. And then now home is boring. Now like no, everyone is married, kids, nine to five jobs. Yeah, and we're growing up. Yeah, and the friends That's that so are available are like changing, in the middle of changing careers, yeah. like going Living back away. to school. Yeah. And it's just, um, yeah, it's, I don't have friends really back at home anymore. I kind of just, when I'm home, I'm just um, family, Nikki and Gabby and working on writing music and filming because I'm focused there and it feels mm. comforting. And I, I do, do I really do thrive in comfort. And I hate that about me because when I'm also not fully happy when I'm just comfortable. But living on the edge a little bit is like when I make my most insane memories. So I like where I'm at right now. And I know that in the future, I'm going to miss this time. And I living in this moment, knowing I'm going to miss it one day is like- I've been trying to be more present okay. too. I've been like- it's so hard. It's yeah. so hard. It's like the hardest thing that I've ever done. I'm not very good at it. No, me either. I don't try enough either. <laughs> I'm so nostalgic. I'm like, I miss that time. Miss that <laughs> That's time. how we bonded. I know. We're so nostalgic. I know. It's bad, but it's, I don't know. That I, I have been trying to be more present though. Mm-hmm. I also commend you for at least trying to move out here. Like you did the damn thing and then it didn't work out for you and that's mm-hmm. fine. I do agree though. It's all who you're with. It's mm-hmm. about having a circle. It's about having a family and like people who like, love and respect you. And I always hate when people shit talk LA cause I'm like, it's not the city. It's yeah. never the city. It's, it's the, the group. It's the people. Yeah. It's the people because there definitely are those people out here that chew you up and spit you out yeah. or use you to social climb or yeah. don't actually care or gossip about you. But I actually lately, 
since January feel more seen and understood out here than back at home. I always thought you would thrive here. So I think that's why I was always confused when it didn't work out. I just think I wasn't ready. Yeah. Okay, we already know time is money. Our time is so valuable and it's so important to find a more efficient way of doing things. In today's world, every second counts. And that feeling of working against the clock is especially strong for people who run a small business. People who run a small business, you guys know we support and love small businesses here at Pretty Basic. You guys are superheroes. You guys are killing it. You are doing so much and you deserve all the credit and validation in the world. So stamps.com is absolutely amazing because they make mailing and shipping quick, easy, and cost-effective to save you time, stress, and money. For more than 20 years, stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. Stamps.com gives you access to all of the post office and UPS shipping services that you need with discounts that you can't find anywhere else right from your computer. It basically just makes the shipping process exponentially easier. All you need is your regular computer and printer, no special equipment, no supplies. It's so easy. You can do it straight from home. You're up and running in minutes and printing official postage for any letter, any package, anywhere. You can do it wherever you want to send it. Plus, Stamps.com seamlessly works with Shopify, Amazon, Etsy, eBay, and more. Seriously, guys, it cannot get any easier. So whether you're in office sending invoices, an Etsy shop sending your products, or a warehouse shipping out orders, Stamps.com is your mailing and shipping solution. Stop wasting time and start saving money when you use Stamps.com to mail and ship. Sign up with promo code BASIC for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code BASIC with the whole like house situation because I started building it um, August of last year when um, the pandemic was getting bad again and everything was shutting back down again. And it, remember there was like variant this, yeah. variant that, everything shut back down, some places back in quarantine. Like we realized this is gonna go on for a while. I got so used to Pennsylvania because I was quarantined there from 2019 to literally like January this year. And it, I got really comfortable to the point where I was like, I just need a bigger space now and I want to invest my money the right way. Mm -hmm. And because it's always going to be home, might as well get a house here. Yeah. But um, then all of a sudden in January, like something shifted in the universe and I stayed out here for some reason for like a month. After my LA show, I just didn't go home. I was supposed to go home. Oh yeah. I just never went home. <laughs> I remember you texted me like, yeah, I'm still here. I'm still and I was like, here. oh, I thought you left. <laughs> I just like had an intuition and I stayed and then I we have, make it so hard on ourselves I like to follow a plan to be like, oh, yeah. well, no, I should be going back by now. It's like, no, you could be out here for as long as you want. My circle and my life is forming out here. So yeah. I just like, what do I do? like I want yeah. people to come to my house. Yeah. I don't have people to come to my She's house. She's such a home. hoster. I think you should rent it out and move here. I yeah. think so personally. Just try it even for a year. <laughs> no, but I, but see the thing is, is like I struggled with feeling lonely mm -hmm. and I'm a twin. So I'm naturally codependent. I have gotten way more independent but I do feel like being Adeline's roommate is really good for me because yeah. first of all, I never had that real college experience. Yeah. I would go to college and commute and then go home and like edit videos. I never had a college experience. Yeah. And like her apartment kind of feels like a little, like a girl frat house, yeah. like a stripper pole. Yes. And a like, stripper pole. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. fun. I mean, that's how we bonded because like neither of us really had the like four year experience. So then once we became friends and started going out more, we were like, oh my God, this feels like that time I missed out on, which obviously I'm so grateful that, you know, we chose YouTube and we decided to like work our asses off. And, um, you know, we did give up some of the really awesome, exciting times about college. So I feel like I know what you're feeling there. And it yeah. is, and especially with someone who like you trust and like gets YouTube, it was like the, I feel like our bond is forever because of that. Like, and like having a content house sounds fun um, too. It's like no yeah. one, you yeah. don't feel uncomfortable at all. Yeah. Like it's just a free for all, which is great. So like I get to be alone in my room and like Andre's there, Adeline's there. And then she has friends from Toronto, like come in and out that I'm now friends with. And yeah. um, I just feel like we formed like a friend group. And like, I like my living situation because I get to just, tag along to plans and me that's like, me you know because I don't I hate making plans I hate and making it's, plans, it's yeah. we've had to be like okay Alicia you need to make plans sometimes because obviously Remy's gonna be like sad if she's the only one reaching out so like that's a little bit of a battle sometimes but I love I love like that's so my personality so my personality I mean I love tagging along, along on plans too like I know but fun. you're so good at planning it's a, you're it's like, a okay, push. cool. We have a reservation. Here's the reservation. Like, and I'm like, oh, perfect. Just tell me what <laughs> and where. Like, I'm okay with being alone, but I think I'm just a, like a major people person. Like, yeah. Yeah. I love just like, I grew up in a big household, like with, with a twin. Like, 
I always, with me and my sisters, always had something fun to do. Like, we would put on shows and shit. Like, and I just remember thinking, like, the last t- five years, wow, like, being an adult's lonely and, and boring? Yeah. Like, why was my childhood and high school, like, fun? Like, I want fun in my adult life. And I just realized, oh, like, the fun is now forming here. I love you that. Know? I yeah. love that. I love that. I have one last question. It's a deep one, so we can cut it if you want to. Okay. How was it coming out while in a relationship like not oh we broke up hey here's the thing like in a relationship I'm like actually really glad you asked this question because like, I'm I've totally been okay answering this literally the second we knew we were having you I was, that was the first question that came to my mind I was like yeah. this is such one I think a lot of people go through that and two I can't imagine the feeling of people diminishing the relationship I don't know please talk about it yeah so I went to Catholic high school and Catholic college and Catholic elementary school, like everything was just like Catholic and um, Italian, Cuban, old fashioned relatives. Um, I knew like I liked guys and girls since I was like, uh, I, I was attracted to people literally in first grade, like girls, like I just go so young. But then when I was in seventh grade, specifically like 12, I started getting like sexual feelings you're like yeah. what the yeah. fuck is happening <laughs> yeah I was like and um yeah I knew that you know like those there were terms like lesbian yeah like all that stuff that were used as like jokes and insults to bully people and to tease people make fun of them and be sarcastic I knew that what I was feeling was wrong so I just like learned how to suppress and I remember senior year of high school I didn't have a boyfriend to even all high school never showed interest I was the happiest single person literally like unbothered Gabby and Alex my sisters were dating constantly and I was just by myself virgin like <laughs> I was like, you know. like hey. yeah. I was, my purpose was creating plans with my friends every weekend yeah and taking pictures yep and having fun I didn't give a fuck about having a boyfriend mm-hmm. and all of a sudden I became best friends with this kid that was Jerry and he was my best friend but he wanted to date me and I would I didn't want a boyfriend and he, I didn't want to lose him as a friend. And he said, well, I can't be in your life. This hurts too much. Yeah. I just wanted you or I can't have you. And I'm like, fine, I guess we can date. Mm. And I, the whole relationship, I was, um, I almost thought I was asexual while I was in it. Like I could tell he loved me so much more. Yeah. And he like, he, in the beginning, he was such a good boyfriend, like did everything for me. And I just felt like this, I just a disconnect. Like there was like a like a wall over my heart mm. and after we broke up I was devastated because I he if he became my world after high school because I didn't branch out I didn't make friends yeah I he was I lost my virginity to him I had no friends except my boyfriend so when he broke up with me it was instead of like a I miss this person it was a I don't know who the fuck I am so yeah, I lost you could, it yeah wow. that, it was very yeah. And, intense yeah and then after that breakup, I healed a little bit. I actually did start hooking up with girls at the bar between him and Nate. Okay. So I did have that 2017. I it confirmed, yeah, you're bi. And um, then me and Nate just happened. And I really feel Nate is my first love. Like, um, I think that Jerry was like puppy love. I yeah. think Nate is real, real love. Yeah. And he, I didn't know how to handle those emotions of being that deeply in love to where I want to be my best self and I don't want to lose him. And I obviously like, I just don't know how to handle it. Like you have this amazing thing and you realize I can't now live without it. Mm. (laughs) And um, then I closeted myself after coming out kind of in my personal life at home. Mm -hmm. I didn't come out online, but I, people like my friends knew I was by, I was hooking up with girls. Like I was out at home, but not online. And then I started dating Nate again and I just kind of like, that mm-hmm. didn't happen because I was so scared of losing him. I don't know so, why so my brain knew, made that up. Okay, okay. I didn't know if you yeah. were like, Did oh, no, I'm confused. Did you ever have a, a, like a sit-down conversation yes. like in the very beginning? Not in the beginning. We had a really? sit-down conversation in 2020 about it. Wow. Yeah. Oh so my, That's so hard. Yeah. So basically, I with all that time alone during lockdown. Um, Yo, secrets came out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm not my full self anywhere I can't even retweet things about finding women hot or that I want to like fuck like shit like that I was like I can't even be a part of this community and I I, I've known I've been a part of it it also the battle of like telling people like no like like trying to encourage people to come out or like 
that they shouldn't be embarrassed or anything like that, but then still hide it. Yeah. It would just sucked because like I had this little window to come out between my ex and him. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't. Did you regret that? I did okay. for years. Interesting. And then during quarantine, I was like, if he's who I'm going to end up with, I have to tell him. And I, and I, I shouldn't make myself smaller for anyone. Like wow. I'm going to come out online. He's either going to be okay with it or he's not. And if he's not okay with it, this is how I know. Yeah. I wish young you heard this. I like, know. Insane. Like I wanted to put my life in the fast lane because I, when I am walking down the aisle one day, like I want whoever I'm marrying to be like, like to know a hundred percent who they're marrying yeah. and not have something come out of left field. Plus like, that's not like love is unconditional. Yeah. Like I want unconditional love. So keeping this from him, it felt like I would, it was conditional. It felt like I was a huge keeping, part of you keeping something yeah did like resentment build it all for you you're maybe you towards him without him even knowing it too because you're like holding this in I think there was a little disconnect for sure mm -hmm. and then I just remember one morning we were literally brushing our teeth and I it just felt like the perfect time I don't oh it was God. so random and I was like can I tell you something he's like sure and I'm like it's gonna be I remember what I said I was like this is gonna be really confusing for you because like we're intimate and I feel like you, you might not even almost believe me but um, I just have to tell you that I'm bi and I, I've been this way my whole life and I've never wanted to tell you that because I'm scared that you're, you're not going to want to be with me anymore. Wow. And, um, he was like, I knew it. I was going <laughs> to say, I feel like he knew, <laughs> um, but, and but that's so like, scary, you yeah, know? And he like gave me a hug and he was like, <sighs> and then like later on, like in the relationship, um, I would be able to actually make like TikToks about it and like yeah. show them to him and laugh at them. And like, I could say like, oh, I find this person attractive and he find them attractive too. <laughs> oh, but I love that he didn't pull the conversation yeah. out of you. He waited until you were ready to talk yeah. about it. That's really special. Yeah. And he's just said, Nikki, like, you were making out with girls at the bar when we were talking. <laughs> <laughs> he was there like, damn, that's hot. <laughs> yeah. He's like honestly like the shit we've been through it's like yeah. like that's my like buddy like we've just been through a lot together. yeah like moving to LA driving across the country to move home yeah going on tour driving together. across the country yeah <laughs> I don't yeah. know if you knew this um you're not diminishing your anxiety in any way because I too struggle with anxiety but that vlog is so actually funny it was oh my so god funny. that vlog did you I watch it that vlog. oh my yeah. god if you don't know what we're Aww. talking about Nikki ha Terrible fear of flying. I fully get it. I get it. We all have our things. So she was like, we're <laughs> driving back home to Pennsylvania on the East Coast. How long was that drive? <laughs> like four days, right? Holy shit. <laughs> Listen, I remember being in like Utah. Bum fuck nowhere. Or like Arizona with like Red Rock everywhere. It looks like Mars. Not a thing in sight. <laughs> I'm not so a single glad you car, documented it. Not a single car on the road and no gas stations for like a hundred miles. And was no. that more scary than flying? Yeah, yeah. You're like, I we're gonna like, get murdered. I was like, yeah, I was like, we're gonna get murdered. We're not gonna make it home. We're gonna get murdered. Four days. And we would stop at like a subway in like like Iowa, Des Moines or something, or like Nebraska. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. We would stop somewhere, like Nebraska was buggy. Yeah. We would stop and get, like subways are all across the country, by of the way. Of course, yeah. So like we would just eat subway the whole time. That was the only thing in like Nebraska, like dead ass. Yeah. And like we, and like Kansas, yeah. like, um, we took the like the worst route, by the way. You could do like a scenic route down south. Or you can go up north. But you just wanted to book it We there. booked yeah. it through the yeah. Midwest. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> and you should have got like a tour van. We just, <laughs> yes. we took Don't Nate's it. Ford Taurus and just yes, drove yes. across the country. That's so funny. And I was so scared. I remember being at the rest stops like, <laughs> oh my God, like if it, what if someone just like hijacks, like takes our car, like, yeah. like takes our car, like we're stranded. We're literally yeah. fucking oh stranded. There's no Uber. It was <laughs> Des Moines. Have you <laughs> flew since then? Are we back oh, to flying now, at all? Now I'm like, yes. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I, I realized flying is the key to my happiness because <laughs> I need the best of both worlds. Like it's, Hannah Montana. There Absolutely. you go. Yes. Absolutely. And then you just enjoy, yeah, you know, yeah. also alcohol up there. You yeah, know? a couple <laughs> drinks, medication. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, we're good. Yeah, I, seeing a psychiatrist changed my life. <laughs> Literally same. Yeah. Literally I, That's same. why I'm able to fly now, so. That's amazing See? though. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That mixed with the four day road trip. You're like, yeah. you know what? I'm good. So, oh, I'm so good. Yeah. if you have a fear of flying, know that it's possible to get past Listen, it. Listen, like, it was bad. I thought it was just, I was doomed. Like, I would go in the air and not make it down. I think that every time. Really? Absolutely I've every never time. Thought that. Like, the plane shakes. I'm like, here we go. <laughs> I'm, like, take me. I'm ready. <laughs> That's the worst. I'm ready. <laughs> I actually like, had a really, really bad flight home uh, from LA for tour rehearsals. 
another really bad scarring one. Oh, so, I'm sorry. Also, if shit happens to you, the amount of times uh, where I'd be like, Nikki, like the chance of that happening is very small. It's not going to happen. And then it happened. Literally, there was like a murderer <gasps> in- How one, do you remember? I remember weird, weird shit happens to you In guys. our hotel. In a hotel. Was, like, I'm fucking, I kid you not. And I was like, that doesn't happen to people. <laughs> like, I'm not, I forget that story, but I just remember being like, I'm never going to say that won't happen yeah, to them. Yeah, you diminish oh, again. it. Again, I will never, because I was like, hey, like, it's okay. I, I thought in the beginning of our friendship, I was like, I can definitely help, like, calm them down. Like, I'll, like, give them some, you know. Me and Gabby. Nope. <laughs> Literally, I, like, I quickly learned. I was like, Mary's never not in your hands. Weird fucking shit. I'm like, oh, my God. There was someone who literally was a murderer oh on their, like, like, next to us at a hotel. Did yeah. the police come? It, the front desk like t- talked to us and so it was weird. It was oh literally, I was God. like, yeah. It was like the like, nicest Beverly sting. Hills hotel yeah. too. <gasps> yeah, yeah. You wouldn't expect it. Uh, <laughs> the SWAT yeah. team is just like circling. <sighs> you need to write down this. Sh- I've always, I. she gets mad at me because I always forget stories. Like we'll sit here and she's like telling funny stories about her life. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like nothing cool has happened to me. But then stuff like this will happen. I'm like, oh yeah, that was really funny. And I'm like, wait, that's, that's a, not, that's a big story. That's insane. Yeah, like literally like that. You know how, why I drove across the country, right? Because I mean, you couldn't fly? fly? No, I had a horrible flight to Coachella 2019. Oh. It had a crosswind landing, which is like when the wind's pushing the plane and it literally, you're landing like sideways. <gasps> so again, she's about to fly and I'm like, don't worry, nothing's gonna happen. Shit like that happens. And I'm like, fuck me. I felt like the plane, like I felt it, like the wind pushing it. It was like, we're gonna just get pushed out of the air and just fall, like, it just didn't feel right. And, um, it was the windiest day in LA. And oh my God. after that, then um, the, our Uber driver, we were telling him how bad the flight was. Then he told us about a flight that like something in the back of the plane got fucked up and then it flipped upside down and people were like, like literally like upside down in the oh airplane in the sky and then it dove into the water. And like, <gasps> he literally told me that. I was like- You're like, fuck. And then <laughs> apparently he was like, yeah, there's a movie about it. Then my dumb ass watches the movie that oh, was made about it. With Tom Hanks? No, that's the oh, other one. That's, so that's the one that landed in the water. Yes, but the Hudson. Hudson. Did, did that one, did they not I survive? watched. They actually all survived. Oh, yeah, good. Okay, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, like good. It's like good. a heroic story. And then they all tried to sue him. I was like, the fuck? Yeah. But- <laughs> Sorry. Sully. <laughs> literally. He saved their lives. Yes. But besides the point, they um, that flight and hearing that story and then watching my dumbass watch the scary scene but from the movie. That OCD when you're like, I just, yeah. you get upset. I get it. I, I get just, it. I, I just couldn't get on an airplane. Yeah. Like, I literally couldn't. But- um, recently I had, oh, it's fucking Alaska Airlines every time. <laughs> so don't, we've learned, Delta, we've learned. Delta like, listen, like, I don't want to like a fucking case on yeah. me, but I'm just saying like, <laughs> I don't think it's Alaska, but I think it's like, it's so funny that it's the same. When like, you notice a coin, yeah. But yeah, so like that crosswind landing was Alaska. I think the planes are honestly really narrow or something mm. to where it's like, just not it. Mary, my assistant who's right here, my, we were on a flight to, uh, the East coast for my tour and, like, okay. cause we had to go back for rehearsals. We, I just remember pulling out onto the, whatever it's called. Tarmac? Yes. <laughs> and it looked like, oh, it's raining. It looked soaked. And I was like, oh, interesting. And then all of a sudden we take off and all this water starts hitting the, the windows. And then all the most turbulent takeoff of my life, all of a sudden, like, you know, like if something's going to happen with the plane, it's like during takeoff or landing. So it's like, oh take off like oh no you're good you once you reach altitude yeah. so it's like i'm like oh fuck there's like water hitting the windshield and then it's like dropping and then all of a sudden all this gray i think it was clouds like storm clouds it was just gray with water hitting the windshield you couldn't see anything outside the window oh my God. and then all of a sudden lightning or something like <gasps> literally like light and it was like and you know how when you take off in la you go over the ocean yeah. and turn around to yeah. go to the east coast yeah. Yeah. we're going over the ocean too so yeah. i'm like mother fuck. yeah and it was so scary. It was at nighttime too. Oh so it's like, God. just like the whole thing was- Everything. Even Mary, like we were looking at each other, holding our hands like this is You're looking it. to her for like a- assurance and she's also she's freaking out. So then you're like, fuck. <laughs> we were like, we're, we might go down. Like, oof. But I- See, I would be like, oh, at least it's over the ocean. That's what I was just land, thinking. I was you know? like, I could, I could maybe Get live. on the raft. I could maybe live. <laughs> I could maybe. Have a better chance. And I was looking at the flight attendant again, just unbothered. Oh my <laughs> God. Like, I, always, I always look to them. If they're freaking out, then I'll freak yeah, out. But yeah, yeah, yeah. if they're just sitting, I'm like, okay, it's normal, Remy, it's fine. Literally. But I feel the same way. I do. But I was so proud of myself for coming back out here because yeah. last time we had to drive. Yeah. This time I was scared. 
And I was like chickening out. I moved my flight once, just once by Aww. like 12 hours. Cause I was like, I okay. need 12 more hours. Yeah, yeah. I need to take a Xanax or something. And I was like, okay, I'm good. And then I, the flight was the smoothest flight of my life here. So oh my God, good. it was great. JetBlue is great. I love JetBlue. Yeah. I do too. JetBlue Mint. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so good. Oh yeah. So, I splurge so on Mint. It's Oops. the best. That's yeah. my, oh my God. I, yep. I'm so fine paying for that. Same. <laughs> <laughs> I am very excited for this 4th of July because I have a feeling we're going to be uh, living it up like we did back in, what was it, 2018? I was not even here last 4th of July. I was you out of weren't. town. I know. So I'm like, I'm ready to go hard this 4th of July. I just want to be on the west side somewhere, bopping around. <laughs> Falling asleep in the Uber before the fireworks <laughs> go off. <laughs> that maybe has happened before in the past. <laughs> Here's my biggest thing with 4th of July I've learned over the years. I love piecing together outfits that make it festive, but also stuff I'll wear later because then I don't feel bad buying it as much. And also like not too in your face. Like yeah. a little pop of red, a little pop of blue, a little pop of white. We are, we are- um, Red, white, and basic? We are- <laughs> we are red, white, and basic. We are patriotic, but not in your face. We are subtle patriotic ladies. I like doing it with a denim skirt. Because there's your blue. Cute. A white crop top. A little red bandana. A little red, red bandana. Yep. Red solo cup yes. in the hand. That's all you She's need. She's good to go. White sneakers. Something chill. Um, I don't, I, I really do love 4th of July. I think that actually one of my favorite memories of our friendship is 4th of July 2018. 18, with Murph. Yep. Yep. I think that was one of my favorite days. We went out all day long. We were on the beach. We <laughs> have like so many memories just from that one single day. Mm -hmm. Like core memories that I'm going to take, take to the grave. But it was so fun and we were so prepared. We had everything we needed. Mm -hmm. The fits, iconic. Also, obviously, sunglasses. That also goes with my outfit that I was yes. saying. Yes, yes. Um, especially because it's hot. Um, I don't know. Or you're going to be on the beach. Maybe you need like a cute little bikini. Beach, cute boat, one lake. Piece. Yes. Yeah. Some sort of body of water. Make sure you have your sunscreen. Yes. Make sure you have, you have your SPF lip balm. Or even if you're having a beach day, like it kind of is fun to be festive and like have like the matching towels and the beach chairs. Or if you're at hosting. Oh, I'm all over that. Oh my God. A cute little like a uh, beach bucket with like some paddle boards yes, and balls. Like, yes, yes. <laughs> she loves literally balls. Give me anything <laughs> that is 4th of July branded and I will have it at my beach party. Yes. The Memorial Day one did go over very well. Oh. Macy's had me covered. So if you're listening to this and you're like, man, I also want to have a good 4th of July like Remy and Alicia did in 2018, but I don't have a cute bathing suit. I don't have a cute cover up. Maybe I need a tote bag because I'm going to the beach. I, I don't have anything. And you don't know where to go. Where do I go? Where do they go? Don't worry, guys. Macy's. Macy's has got you covered. And when I say covered, I mean from head to toe, from indoor, outdoor, from barbecues to pool days, from lake days to walks in the neighborhood, whatever you're doing, whatever it is, however you want to live up your 4th of July, they've got it. But what is the most iconic part of the 4th of July? The fireworks. Fireworks. In case you guys did not know, Macy's 4th of July fireworks spectacular is indeed happening. And you can watch the spectacular show from New York City on NBC July 4th from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern time and experience a thrilling night of pyrotechnics accompanied by celebrity performances. So if you don't want to go out and do want to stay in or you want to go out and then come back and watch that's it, what that's what you got to do. Gonna that's do. what we're going to do. We and Macy's want to help you have the best 4th of July weekend possible. So for everything you need to get ready, check out our guide at www.macy's.com slash pretty basic. That's www.macy's.com slash pretty basic. So a few weeks ago, we uploaded uh, an episode where I was bawling my eyes out and you text me about it. I wore these today for you. Oh, yeah. I cry a lot and that's okay. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> so cute. Um, I, You're like so open with depression and stuff. I'm like, what? Talk to me. Okay. <laughs> therapist me? Nikki. Yes. Okay, therapist yes. Nikki. Therapist Nikki right now, please. Um, I, I've never... Sorry. I do no, what were you going to say? What were you no. going to say? Also, when I found out that I might have ADHD, I was like, no wonder I always interrupt Remy on the podcast. Talk it's, to it's me. Hyper. I might. <laughs> it's like attention and hyperactivity all at once. Yeah, interesting. It's, I always used to get comments about me talking over Gabby and it's the ADHD. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but what do you want to know? Like, like growing up, there was obviously like stuff I dealt with, like getting bullied, losing friends, changing schools, um, losing friends in college, really tough shit I went through. But no matter how hard those things were, I never ever felt the 
kind of depression that makes you unable to look forward to things, suck the life out of you in your own life, and just want to give up and stay in bed. I never experienced that until my first breakup, which was at 22. Mm -hmm. And um, once I experienced that kind of like low, I feel like I can't go back to that innocence. Yes. I don't think there is ever going back. I think Is that just getting older? Is that I, getting older plus m mental health? Like, I don't think, I think when there's like an innocence, life is hard. Life is brutal. There's a, like the only constant thing in life is change. Life is f just unsettling. And like, I think it's a matter of time before everyone experiences at one point. Yeah. And I think before you experience depression, life seems so much more innocent. And once you experience depression, you appreciate the happy moments even more because you know how bad the lows are. But also you get scared. You always know like I could snap back there again. I just got to look out for myself. Yeah. You know, which means like protecting your energy and, and what you say yes to and your decision making and, and like, you ha that's where the self-care really comes in. Like when I think self-care, self-care day, I think like opposite of what I would have thought of before I experienced depression. Before depression, self-care I thought was like a face mask. Yeah. Now that I have experienced depression for years, I know that self-care means protecting your energy, not having shame Staying on yourself, things. not responding to people. It's okay. Yeah. Like, t you know, and mm -hmm. also self-care means forcing yourself to get out of bed, forcing yourself to eat, forcing yourself to get up, do your hair and makeup because you know that's going to keep you in alignment for the day. Mm. It's like watching out for yourself to make sure you don't go back there. Making plans, planning trips so you know you have something to look forward to. It's ways to start caring for your mind because you know how it could go back there again. That is, so, it's interesting how you mentioned like self-care. I think there is a very, I don't want to say taboo, but the idea of self-care is very like, hee hee, I'm going to like light a candle and like put a face mask on, which is like fine if that's what someone's doing. But I do think there's so much more to self-care with when with that, what you're saying. I feel like that idea of self-care was brought on by, by companies. Us. Well, by us, by, <laughs> also by like, by the candle companies, by literally <laughs> yeah. by, by like the, um, the face mask companies of like, take care of yourself. But like, that's a surface level taking care yeah. of yourself, not an internal actually like mentally taking care of yourself. Which it's not saying that those things don't help because I'm sure there's people where they're like, no, Ashley I want Nicole. my but Ashley Nicole, my sister. <laughs> like they're like, <laughs> you know, but I almost think now at this age, when I think of self-care, I actually think that it means mothering yourself mm. because like when you're sad and you're scared and you're worried and you're broken, like no one else is gonna pull you out of that slump except yourself. So you have to almost like, like when I'm going through it here in LA, instead of FaceTiming somebody, I'm gonna get lost in YouTube videos or do my laundry or shower or make myself a yummy salad that no one else is gonna see that's like pretty because I'm gonna feed myself, like mm -hmm. literally mothering yourself. Because if you don't eat properly, if you don't sleep properly, if you don't get the right amount of like social interaction, you are setting yourself up to go back there. I was going to say, so like, obviously I just recently talked about this on the podcast. I don't want to like act like I know yeah. exactly what you went through, but like, what advice do you have for people or me or other people listening for like, like, how do I not let myself slip back into that? Or like, it is scary to be like, oh shoot, is this just how I am now? Or is there a day where I'm going to be back to my old normal self? Will I ever be my old normal? Like, or how so do you just not worry about that? Those thoughts are so toxic. Like you need to stop doing that to yourself. But how? how? So <laughs> you need to, what you need to say is like, this is like life has seasons, life has chapters. Your old self is still you. And what you're going through right now is still you. You are still the same person, but you are just like going through maybe a more hibernating type of phase of your life where like you're reflecting and thinking about things and you're maybe unmotivated and you have to say, that's okay. That's literally okay. You just have to tell yourself it's okay. <laughs> She's been trying to tell me this for a while. And you, and <laughs> you have, therapist, Nikki. and if you say you're okay, like if you like actually loving yourself and having empathy for your situation and stop being hard on yourself and stop looking at old photos and be like, I was cooler back then. Like you're literally like being a mean girl to yourself. Like mm, you gotta like really good. be, you're your own ride or die. Like you need to be like, I'm for some reason not feeling myself that's literally okay. I am this age. I've gotten this far. 
if you keep putting pressure on yourself, it's going to be harder to get out of whatever it is. Yeah. The only way to get out of it is to be optimistic a little bit with yourself because you've seen yourself come out of every other thing you've gotten through to this point. Mm. And just know that. Yeah, I love that. Like there's life is like this. Like, just like that. You're going to get out of like it again. This, there's no dark, t- like there is always light because that's life. It's just like this. Yeah. And like, you can't be hard on yourself. Like you have to have empathy for yourself. You, you can't gaslight yourself. Yes. Do you have tips for like changing your thought patterns or do you like, what has helped you specifically? Um, Which I, it might not work for other people, but. So I'm in more control than I realize. Okay. I think sometimes my depression and my, and my OCD, because yeah. we both are, we have very similar it things. It makes sense looking back yeah. at everything. Look, your OCD tends to make, like our OCD makes us obsess over things. Yeah. So when we get depressed, then we get obsessed with that fact that we are depressed and we get hung up on it. And we're like, well, what if I never go back to this? Or what if, what if, what if? Yeah. And I think the best advice and the best thing that's ever worked for me is live moment by moment. That is it. Do not live in the future. Do not live in the past. Like past leash is gone. Mm-hmm. Future you hasn't even, we don't even know who future yeah. Alicia is. You can fucking buzz your head next year. Yeah, <laughs> literally. We yeah. don't know yeah. her. Things can change in a week, uh-huh. six months, a year, n- tomorrow. Yeah. We don't, tomorrow isn't even here. So get that pressure of tomorrow off of you. Like just take it moment by moment. And like, what's going to make present Alicia have fun tonight? Go out with Remy? Fuck it, go out with Remy. Start honoring your present self. And the more you start making decisions in the moment and honoring your present self, you're also gonna realize, oh my God, I had so much fun this past month. Yeah. It's like, and then you'll slowly get out of it. Yeah. You just have wow. to moment. That's really, really good advice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I do you wanna go back to school for this shit? <laughs> no, I, I'm like, oh my God, that, that was, was really, good. really, really, really good. Do you feel it innately in yourself that you will get through what you're going through currently? Yes, I think a lot. So after we uploaded that one episode, I had so many people reach out to me. And of course that episode came out a week later than when we recorded it. So everyone's like, are you okay? Are you okay? And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm way I'm better than I was last week. <laughs> yeah. Trust me. Yeah. Um, but thank you for reaching out. And yes, but I think there is that fear of like, fuck. Getting like, back into like, it again. Am I not going to be in control of that? It but does remind say, me of anxiety a lot. But you have to say, who cares? Who cares? See, that's Literally, time. who cares? When I was back home in Pennsylvania, I had another like depressive week or two to the point where I moved my trip because I literally had a mental breakdown. And um, I told myself, this is just a part of my life. This is not, this does not mean I'm in a depressive episode. This does not mean anything. I can control what this means, which whatever's going to make me feel better right now. That's all the answer is. It's just whatever's yeah. going to make me feel better right now. If it means staying home to cry it out, you know, what really helps me S- saying I'm going to have a depression in three days. Like letting yourself just be in 72 it? hours okay. where I am allowing myself to, if I don't want to shower, if I don't want to work, if I'm just going to watch shows, if I'm going to cry, be sad. I give it those three days. And then by the end of those two days, I don't want to be sad anymore. You're, t- you're over it's it. It's like almost like a crash course. It's like you have to let it's yourself feel it. things. Sometimes when you push it aside and you keep trying to act like everything's fine, it eventually all comes down. Literally me. Yeah. <laughs> Insert yeah. clip. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think with the fighting, it's been, I think I've gotten better at talking about it. You can't fight your feelings. Yeah. But you also have to mother yourself and know when to get up. I have a few thoughts. One, my views of mental health have changed a lot. And again, I've always been pro mental health, blah, 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 blah. like, oh, I struggle with anxiety or whatever. But I have had friendships and yours was one of them where when the other person was going through their own mental health issues, like it is hard being that friend on the other side where you're like, oh, like they never hit me up. Like I'm always the one reaching out. Like um they're ghosting me or whatever and it's it's I think my views have changed now where I'm like damn like I feel for both sides because it is hard when you're friends with someone and you feel like you've lost a friend you know what I mean like I I've, I've felt that not just from you but from other people and for those people who don't know like we used to be really really close and we kind of drifted but now I'm like fuck I feel like I get this side and I'm mm-hmm. like damn if people like left because I'm not a good friend right now I'd be like damn that's hard you know like I have more empathy for that side now too um so I think that's what's really interesting of like, I don't know, like how, like, I'm like, I never want her to feel this way. So I'm like, how do you navigate that? Navigate like being like how, like being okay if people both, like, how do you navigate like being in the position where you're like, okay, like my mental health isn't good. And I've, I've noticed people distancing. How do you deal with oh. the thoughts that are like, it's my fault, blah, blah, blah. But then how do you also have grace with yourself? But this is a great like testament to show how much, 
you show up for yourself and how much other people show up for you. Because in times like these, especially with adult friendships, yeah, we, we as adults, we know how stressful and how hard life is. Your friendships at this age should understand that. Yeah, At this age, they should understand that. And if they don't understand that, then maybe you're supposed to grow apart while you go through this and find other people you relate to to get you through this time. And maybe you'll find your way back to this other person, whoever feels like you're, they're, you're absent. Because you need, you need a support system and you yeah. can't feel guilt. But at the same time, I also have friends that have depression mm-hmm. now that I found when I was going through it. Yeah. And now I'm a little bit on the other end and now they're going through it. And I would hope that you have friends that are like, you know what? I understand like you're going through it. If you don't have space for me right now, like that's I love okay. That wording. Yeah. If you don't have space for me, it, I know it means you don't, it, I know it means like it's, it has nothing to do with our friendship. Yeah. I just, if you're going through it and you don't have space for me, it's okay. I will give like, give you your space you know, I have I, friends that literally say that to me. Wow. But yeah. that's so mature. Yeah. I feel like I also understand, and even from other friends that I've had who have gone through a lot of stuff, it was really hard being that friend. But I also will say, I think a lot of it was on me for not speaking up and being like, hey, it really hurts when you, you know, you do ghost me for three months or you only come to me when you have problems and you want to talk to me, not when, you know, you, you never ask about me. Like, so I feel like a lot of my other issues being the friend in that situation was more so because I wasn't speaking up and I wasn't saying like, hey, I also like. And then I think if you did speak up, that would give that other person or like in our situation, I would have probably said, I'm so sorry. I can't even like, I I can't even be alone right now. I I can't even get out of bed. I can't even brush my teeth. I, I, how I can't even like upload on YouTube. I don't even know how to like be that for you. Like this has nothing to do with you. I'm just going through it. Yeah. And I would have said that and maybe like, you probably would have been like, oh, well, like, I don't, I, I can't relate to this, but like, shit. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. but shit, well, yeah. but fuck. Yeah. Damn, um, no, this is super insightful. And again, anxiety is so known to me. And I feel like it's different when you see someone trembling from anxiety. Clearly there's a visual thing happening. Physical. Yeah. Physical yeah. thing happening. You're like, oh, they're not okay. Depression can come off as like selfish and lazy. It, do- it comes off as lazy. And I think that's for me, I always did look down on people and that's me being very blunt about it and not hiding it. I would be like, oh, they're lazy. Like they need to work harder. And now I'm like, I'm like, I don't want people thinking that of me. And that's an ego thing. That's the same way I used to look down at people that like were so clung to their boyfriends and like couldn't make decisions for themselves and lost all their friends. Yeah. But then I fell in love for the first time and I became that bitch. And I was like, oh, I get it. And it's, I think part of it's just getting older when you experience more things. But yeah, or not also not caring. Like I've even had the thought, I'm like, damn, I mean, obviously people can like diagnose for anything these days, but also like me having been diagnosed with obviously anxiety, mild OCD, depression now. Um, like, I'm like, damn, I hope people don't just like see me as this girl who's like using this to like what, like, and that used to be my fear too. Or, or being like, oh, she's just like a mental bitch. You know what I mean? Like, little, yeah. and, I, and I'm like, again, I'm still like letting those thoughts. I'm like, I just need to say like, who cares? And I know that's a. So like, we're constantly like figuring shit out about ourselves and like there isn't just one like there's there's not just like one label like oh this girl has OCD that's it okay, yeah like next also it, I mean it like you said you can grow in and out of like like obsessions yeah. with OCD which could sometimes it feels like you out you've outgrown OCD and then all of a sudden it comes back in a new form and you're like oh it's still yeah. there and then like maybe sometimes of your life your ADHD is probably more prominent than the OCD and then you identify with each at different times it's stronger at different times but don't ever, you know, there are those people, like I have relatives that literally like think I don't have a grip of myself just because I talk about mental health and post crying selfies. Literally, I'm like, oh, I don't want to post too much crying shit. Like, yeah, like I was, I've been posting like crying selfies, like to like show the lows and the highs. And I will have like a bunch of people like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, Yeah. I'm just showing like my highs and lows, like not just the highs. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Like obviously sometimes I'm not fine, but I want to show that. I just thought of this also be, where you are the friend of someone who is really struggling mentally like with mental health. I've had instances where my gut felt like they were using it to their advantage to be like, "Oh, I'm having a bad like I felt that too." And I've and I hated having that struggle of like, "Oh my god, am I trusting my intuition?" or like I don't want to diminish what they're feeling. Like it was So I felt that same way. And then I realized I have trust issues where I don't trust anybody. Me? <laughs> Me? 
<laughs> and I realized it's a lot of. So like, it's a you thing. It's a mirror thing. It's like projecting. Wow. It's projecting. Oh my God. Like my. So true. So true. When so my true. one friend like who's like goes through depression at home, like I will be like, oh, she canceled on me again. Like she's always like complaining. Blah, blah, blah. And then I'm like, because my mind will tell me, oh, well, like she doesn't actually care about me. And I'm like, no, Nikki. Like you have trust issues that nobody cares about you and that everybody's using you. So mm. like stop, like you've been through this before. Yeah. It comes off that way. And that's like something. And also like people could be using us like everyone like. Yeah. Or, or, or using that. We you can't know. like drive ourselves crazy. It's like sometimes what gives me peace of mind is I'm going to believe what you say yeah, until up you until you give me a Absolutely. reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like I, that way I'm not overthinking things and I'm just like, yeah. yeah. And then that's a them problem if they're lying too. It's like, why would they lie to me? Yeah. I'm going to give them the benefit of the, the doubt until something happens. Yeah. No, I love that. Oh my God. This has been so good. I've been through so many like even friendship breakups in the last like four years. So yeah. it's like even outside of relationships, like I feel like this is like people will pr- mirror you and then you'll project. It's like a thing. Explain that more. Like because you... Like, for example, I'm going to use my own experience. I have been that depressed person that can't get out of bed. But then I'll have, like you said, it's not always down. There'll mm-hmm. be like a good day or two. And I will get out of things and I'll be open and honest to friends and say, I'm going through it. Sorry, I can't make it. And then they'll probably see me online um, having a good day. Yes, 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 yes. And think she was fucking lying to me. Yeah. Or it's from a photo of last week when you did have a good day and you're still in bed posting it. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I have been there where it's like I have said no to some plans the day before and then went out with someone else the next day while going through depression. Because you're just not like thinking straight. You're like kind of in death. You're, you're trying to get through the moment because it just life seems so overwhelming. Yeah. So say someone invited me to go out when I was going through depression, like – let's do brunch. And then I wake up that morning. I realize I don't have the mental health, like the capability to get up and go to brunch. I need to stay in bed. I will literally text them and be like, I'm so sorry. Like tell them why. And then the next day, if I go out and party at a club with Gabby, then I know I'm, I'm probably being shitty and it probably comes off as shitty, but I don't regret going to that club because I felt ready to go to that club. Because you needed to go to that club. And I was ready to go to the club that night. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I wasn't ready to go to that brunch the day before. But yeah. then that person might think, well, why couldn't she come to this brunch? But then she's at the club the next day. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you're just taking things in like like this in, with depression. And present, then someone else present, who doesn't present. get it, yeah. it's like, well, big picture. Like, what the fuck? That makes yeah. no sense. But I love that you guys are having these conversations. And I commend you both for speaking so publicly about mental health. Because I, as someone who doesn't, I don't, I would have never guessed that. I'm someone who would have been offended if you yeah. turned my plans down and then went out the next night. But hearing this and like, just you guys having this candid conversation. Now I know if you are like, like survival plans, mode, I completely get it. It makes complete sense yeah. to me. And it now does, I'm not going to be bothered but I, anymore. No, no, no. But I, but I also feel for the friends where I'm like, I don't want them to ever feel that way. So I guess that's just the communication part of it. You just have to be a good communicator. Yeah. And yeah. you can't expect them to like bend over backwards for you. I don't know that, that, yeah, that this was like so insightful for me. Yeah. Cause it's like, how am I going to get through this day, this moment? So That's how do you, last is. question? Cause I know you have to go cause you have a panel. How do you know when to push yourself to go out and do something versus letting yourself have those moments in? You just know. Okay. Like sometimes I had a good day. Why am I hibernating at night? Like everyone's out in the living room having fun. Why am I staying in my room? I just know I'm tired. I just want to like watch a kid movie, you know? But then there's times where I'm getting ready and I'm doing my hair and makeup. And I'm like, I really don't want to fucking go out. What am I doing? Listen to that. But then when there's times where you look back and you realize, I haven't had a lot of social interaction the last few weeks. I haven't had that much fun. I should go out. It'll be good for me. There's like different. It's like the self-care of doing it for yourself versus like, oh, because I want to. It's like really getting to know yourself really wow, wow, really wow, wow, wow. getting to know yourself oh my god like oh knowing your patterns like if i go then this will happen i'll i'll feel good then but then i'll come home and i'll feel worse so i'm just not gonna go altogether yeah like have getting, you just done so much therapy to get to this know, level <laughs> of insight or like how yeah how did you get here so like i've been going through stuff i've 
I have a therapist. I have a life coach. I have wow, okay. a psychic I talk to. I have an intuitive light healer lady. I'm very in tune with this stuff. That's like, no, like you're so insightful. It's a mm-hmm. beautiful thing to watch. Thank you. I love this. Like I, like I said, I write, I like writing music, but I wish there was like something I could do mental health wise. I really feel like that's part of my purpose. Yeah. I saw in your last episode, you were talking about the word purpose. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I think like <laughs> mental health and music are like my purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Beautiful. Well, Thanks. I loved this conversation. Same. I Thanks. could talk about this if you ever need me. Literally no. fucking <laughs> FaceTime literally, me. Literally. I know. I know. I'm, I know. I'm an avid FaceTimer. Like I will keep someone on FaceTime. We can eat our breakfast, do oh, our makeup. Okay. Like, okay. I, I never FaceTime people. And that's just, I just need to get over that. Yeah, Dude, just I'm it. always like, they're it's busy. Thing. I'm live, always like, they're busy. I live in Pennsylvania. All my friends are in cities. We just sit on FaceTime. <laughs> Literally sit when on you, like, FaceTime. you like forget they're even there, like that's the most, yeah. the, the that. perfect thing. You're just like online shopping, like on your laptop. Yeah. You're, like, yeah. the, <laughs> and then you hear them make a noise. Like, oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wait, we used to do that. I know, we did. We literally used to do yeah. that. <laughs> Fuck. Well, thank you so much for being on here. Of course. A pleasure. Guys, if you're not following Nikki, obviously go follow her. Instagram, YouTube, music, Spotify, all of that stuff. Do you want to shout yourself out on anything specifically? Sure. Uh, guys, you won't regret it. Go to Spotify, Nikki DeMar. And I K I D. And listen, if it's on the playlist, you know listen good. to it. You know it's good. Listen yeah. to it. <laughs> Lots of new stuff coming out. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. A I'm lot excited. of truth coming out. Oh, Ooh. shit. <laughs> okay, we love you guys. We will talk to you next week. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.